Hi everyone, so in this video we are going to be talking about logic. So first off, uh, we're going to do a little bit of vocabulary and see what some of this stuff means. And we're going to start off with a proposition. So a proposition is a statement that is either true or false. So the keyword there is it's a statement, which means it is not something like a question or something that can't have a true or false value. So for example, which of these is a proposition? David has green eyes or what color are David's eyes? So the first one is a proposition. So whether or not you know if I have green eyes or not, that still is either true or false. Either I have green eyes or I don't. So it is a proposition. For number two, what color are David's eyes? That's just a question. So that is not a proposition. Now, the rest of this is going to be stuff we can do with propositions. So we're going to start off with negation. The negation of a proposition, P, is denoted by not P, or one of these two symbols. In this video, we're going to be using this one, but you might see either one. It is the statement that makes the opposite claim of P. Okay, so if P is the proposition, math is my favorite subject, what is not P? Not P would be math is not my favorite subject. It's just the opposite of the original claim. So if it says math is my favorite subject, math is not my favorite subject would be the negation of that. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about this truth table for it real quick. So if P is true, not P is false. Just meaning that for me, math is my favorite subject. So this is true. Math is not my favorite subject. Well, by default, I just said math was my favorite subject, so this has to be false. And then vice versa. So if P is false, not P must be true. They just have opposite values because they're saying opposite things. The next one is called disjunction. Right. Or we also use the word or. The disjunction of two propositions, P and Q, notice that we are talking about two propositions now, is denoted by P or Q. And this little symbol right here is what means or. It is true if either P, Q, or both are true. In other words, it is only false if P and Q are both false. All right, so let's look at the next example. If P is the proposition chicken have feathers and Q is the proposition snakes have feathers, what is P or Q? Well, we just put the word or in between them. So chickens have feathers. or snakes have feathers. It's just combining them with the word or. All right, let's look at the truth table for this now. So again, the only time that or is false is if both of the two propositions that you used are false. Otherwise, it's going to be true. 
So in this example, chickens have feathers, that's true. Snakes have feathers, that one's false. So since at least one of them was true, the whole thing is true. So for the truth table, we just go through all our options. So if P and Q are both true, then the OR is true. If P is true and Q is false, it's also true. If P is false and Q is true, it's also true. The only time it's false is if both of them are false. All right, so that would be like if I said one is even or six is a prime number. Both of these are false, so the whole thing is false. All right, next one and so it's called a conjunction the conjunction of two propositions p and q is denoted by p and q where this um, one that's pointed up this time so the upside down v that's the word and right it is only true if both p and q are true so both of them have to be true, otherwise the whole thing is false. So if P is the proposition two plus two equals four, and Q is the proposition the sky is blue, what is P, oops, this one's supposed to be and, so what is P and Q? All right, so all we have to do, just like the or, is combine these two with the word and this time. So 2 plus 2 equals 4, and the sky is blue. So again, for this one, 2 plus 2 does equals 4, so that's true. The sky is blue, so that's true. So the whole thing is true. If either one of those was false though, then the whole thing is false because you have to have them both be true. So for the truth table, as long as they're both true, then P and Q is true. Otherwise it is false. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one, which is going to be the conditional so the conditional of two propositions, P and Q, is denoted by if P then Q, or you may also see it as P implies Q. Both of those mean the same thing, but for this class we're going to try to say if P then Q a little bit more. It is only false if P is true and Q is false. Okay, so this one's the weirdest one out of all of them, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, let's start with example four, though. This one's going to be pretty easy. It's example five that starts getting weird. So if P is the proposition 10 is an even number, and Q is the proposition 20 is an even number, what is if P then Q, or P implies Q? So all we have to do to write it is if the first one, 10 is an even number, then the second one, 20 is an even number. So in this case, 10 is an even number, that's true. 20 is an even number, that's true. 
So the whole thing is true. The next one's going to be where it gets a little weird. So if P is the proposition the sky is pink, and Q is the proposition math is my favorite subject, then what is if P then Q? So if the sky is pink, then Math is my favorite subject. All right, so is the sky pink? No, so that one's false. Math is my favorite subject. So the answer for me might be different than the answer for you. But in the end, it won't actually matter. So I'm going to say it's true because it is true for me. But here's the thing. As soon as you see that the first one is false, the whole thing actually evaluates to true. Which means you can get some really weird stuff with this that's true, but essentially it just means if the first one was false, then anything we may say about the second one doesn't quite matter because the first one was already false, so we just say the whole thing is true. Basically means we don't necessarily know, so the whole thing is true. All right, so truth table. So if they are both true, then it is true, as we saw in example four. If P is true and Q is false, that's the one time that this is going to be false. If P is false, then it doesn't matter what Q is, it's going to be true. Which means in example five, if you said math was not your favorite subject and you had put false here, it doesn't matter. The whole thing is still going to be true. So the whole thing still evaluates to true as soon as you see that P is false. All right, next up, the converse and the contrapositive. So if we have the conditional statement P implies Q or if P then Q, there are two other related propositions. So the converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. So notice how they just swapped around. The converse of a true statement is not necessarily true, but it might be. So if the original statement was true, you can't actually assume anything about the converse. It might be true, it might be false. They don't have to match, but they could. Right? The contrapositive is if not Q, then not P. Right? So not only do you swap them around, but you also add the not in front of each one. This one is actually equivalent to the original statement, meaning if the original statement was true, the contrapositive is also true. The original statement was false, the contrapositive is also false. Those are actually going to match. So find the controverse, sorry, converse and contrapositive of the statement, if you live in Houston, then you live in Texas state the truth value of all three. So let's start with the original statement. If you live in Houston, so some of you may not, but we're gonna go with where I am currently. I am in Houston, so that's true. Then you live in Texas. Well, if I'm in Houston, then I'm also in Texas, so that is also true. 
So if true, then true, they're both true, which means the whole thing is true. For the converse, we're just going to flip those two around. So it's going to become if you live in Texas, then you live in Houston. So for this one, you can probably already tell that this is false, but let's go through each one just in case. So you live in Texas, then you live in Houston. Well, let's say it's true for the first one, but just because you live in Texas doesn't mean that you have to live in Houston, right? So this one does have a different meaning. So if you live in Texas, then you live in Houston, well, you could live in Dallas, or you could live in El Paso, or you could live in Austin, San Antonio. You could live in a whole bunch of other cities than Houston. So this one is really false for most people. For me, it happens to be true because I do happen to live in Houston. All right, but for a bunch of people, this one could be false. And that's the difference. These are two completely different meanings this time. All right, contrapositive. For the contrapositive, not only are we gonna swap them around, but we are also going to put not in front of each one. So if, you do not live in Texas, then you do not live in Houston. This one's also true. And sorry, I erased it, but that one's false. This last one is true. Because if you don't live in Texas, then you can't live in Houston. So that one has the same exact meaning as our original statement. All right. Lastly, we are going to go over truth tables. So we've already seen the truth tables for these basic operations. But we're also going to make truth tables for ones that have multiple operations in them. The key is to go one at a time with the operations and also to refer back to those other truth tables. So make sure you always have those on hand whenever you're doing truth tables like this um, because you do need those. You do need to see those operations and what truth values each have, right? After you do enough of these, you're going to memorize those truth tables anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. But let's go ahead and start. Um, one note, a truth table that has all true at the end is called a tautology. And a truth table with all false at the end is called a contradiction. If it has a mix of true and false, then it's called a contingency. OK, so let's go ahead and start. All of these truth tables are going to start with P and Q. Basically what we're going to be trying to do is for all different variations of what P and Q could be, we want to know what this would end up being. Okay, so to start, we're going to write down all the different values that P and Q can have. So they can both be true, or P could be true and Q could be false or P could be false and Q could be true, or they could both be false. Those are the four different possibilities for P and Q. Now we're gonna take this one step at a time. We're gonna start off with not P. So for not P, we are just going to be looking at P 
and we are going to be negating it. So we're just going to be saying the opposite. So for these first two, P is true, so not P is false. The last two, P is false, so not P is true. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. Not P or Q. Now keep in mind, we've already done not P. So whenever we're doing not P or Q, apologies, not P and Q, I kept saying or there, uh, this is not P and Q, but we're just gonna be looking at these two. We're gonna be looking at not P, and we're gonna be looking at Q. We don't care about P at all because that's not part of this operation. Not P is, and we already have a column for that. All right, so remember, for the and condition, it is only true if both of the two are true. So for the first row, not P is false, Q is true. Since one of them is false, this is false. Both of them are false in the next row, so false. Both of them are true in the next row, so not P and Q is true there. And then in the last row, Q is false, so it is false. And that's it. That's our truth table done. We have a nice column at the end that if we know what P and Q are, we can see immediately what this whole operation is. All right? And since it has a mix of false and trues, it is a contingency. All right, let's go and look at number eight. Make a truth table for P or Q implies P, or if P or Q, the P. Again, we start it the same way as before by having a column for P and Q. and doing those same four rows. And then again, we're gonna take this one operation at a time. So I'm gonna start inside of the parentheses right here. And we're gonna do P or Q. So remember, or is true as long as at least one of them are true. So we have true and true, so that's true. True and false, that's true. False and true, that's true. Lastly, false and false is false. Next, we're gonna do the whole thing. So P or Q implies P. So we are just looking at these two columns now. So remember, the only way that implies is false is if the first one is true and the second one is false. And keep in mind, this is our first one, P is our second one. So when we're reading these, we gotta kind of read them right to left in this case. So, for the first two columns, they're the exact same. Both are true, which means our final value is true. For the third row, P or Q is true, but P is false. So that's the true implies false one. That's the one where it is false. For our final row, P or Q is false. It actually doesn't matter what P is at that point. Because as soon as the first one's false, the whole thing is true. Again, for this one we have a mix of true and false, which means this is contingency. All 
All right, last one, number nine. Again, start off by just putting P and Q. So true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And this time we're gonna have to do a little bit more work. All right, so we're gonna start off with not Q because we wanna do the parentheses first, but to do the parentheses, we need not Q. So remember, negation's nice and easy, because you just do the opposite of Q. So uh, Q is true, not Q is false, Q is false, not Q is true, and so on. Next, P and not Q. We're gonna do the whole parentheses next. Actually, let me put this in a different color. Go ahead and use red. So we want P and not Q. All right, so we're just looking at those two columns. Remember, and means they both have to be true for this to be true. So for the first one, not Q is false, so the whole thing is false. Second one, they're both true. Last two, P is false, so the whole thing is false. All right, now we're ready for the whole thing. So P and not Q implies not Q. So for this one, we're going to be looking at this one. And this one. And again, remember this is our first proposition and our second one. So we kind of have to read those right to left again. All right, so first one, P and not Q is false. So automatically the whole thing is true. Remember. This is implies or if then. So if the first one's false, the whole thing is true automatically. For the second one, they are both true, which comes out to true. And the last two, the first part again is false, which is automatically true. So that's our answer. And in this case, they are all true. If they are all true, that is a tautology. And that is it for logic. All right, I will see you in the next notes. Thank you.